Happy Sunday, all you Minties! This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an overview of the Spawn Compendium Volume 1 from Image Comics. Let's get started! And welcome back, everybody! Now, before getting started, a huge thank you to OrganicPriceBooks.com for sending me a copy of this to do an overview of. Very much appreciated. Uh, they also sell graphic novels over there, Marvel, Image, DC. But uh, thank you so much for sending me a copy of this. I know a lot of my viewers have been excited about this book and what the contents are and the build of it especially. So, let's talk about this book. Here we have Spawn Compendium, Volume 1. It's finally here. What was supposed to be reprints of the hardcovers eventually became this book right here. Now, this isn't the first time we've had this actually exact compendium. We've had this compendium come out sometime around 2010, 2012, something like that. But the issues in here were in black and white. But it was the exact same page count and the material that was missing from here. It's also missing from that particular release. Um, so we're going to be talking about the contents here in a second. But I just wanted to again show everybody what the spine looks like. I love Volume 1, so you all know that gives me hope for a Volume 2. The book retails for $59.99. Both the back cover and the front cover are supplied by Greg Capullo, inks by Todd McFarlane. Now, let's go ahead and get this open. Not, not really a lot going on. There's no dust jacket. It is a soft cover. So, it is soft cover. So, let's go ahead and get it open. Last year, during the quarantine, I did an overview of my deluxe hardcover editions of Spawn. And then we started a hashtag movement on Twitter, trying to get Todd McFarlane or Image to reprint those hardcovers. And then a couple of weeks later, Diamond Solicitations had a bunch of the cover or the hardcovers up for pre-order. And we got all excited. I got was like, hey, somebody told me that they were up for pre-order. I let everybody know in the Saturday streams, and out of nowhere, they put a lockdown on it. People could not no longer order any of the hardcovers. As a matter of fact, they canceled all the pre-orders that they had. And then, about two weeks after that, we had the very first mention of this book right here that showed up in the catalog. So this is the route that they decided to go. This is a compendium, a softcover edition. This book here has 1136 pages, and as I mentioned, retails for $59.99. Uh, all of this had been previously collected before in trade paperbacks, in hardcover editions, in big, huge library size editions. And, of course, in the black and white compendium that came out, like I mentioned, I think it was 2010, 2012, around that era. So, this is the creation of Todd McFarlane. Uh, this is something that he worked on in his teenage years, long before he took over Spider-Man, long before he was drawing issues of G.I. Joe. Um, he was creating his own material, and he thought one day that he would be able to use this character. And sure enough... Him and his six other friends formed Image Comics, and he finally got to use Spawn. Of course, after some tweaking, after... Um, actually, he had to change the skulls, too, because they looked too much like the Punisher skulls from the very first image that we saw of Spawn. It was a promotional ad. But here is the story of Al Simmons. So, let me, really quick, just a quick premise, in case you don't know who he is or what Alda hoorah is about spawn it is the story of al simmons who was a cia operative ends up getting betrayed by his boss and killed on a mission now on this mission uh, he he dies and goes to hell because of all the evil things that he's done so he makes a deal with mal bolgia down there and he just wants to see his wife again his wife wanda so mal bolgia says sure of course he wipes his memory clean and brings him back to Earth five years after he died and gives him this power because he made a deal with him to make him a hellspawn and work for him. This guy right here, big fat pot belly Malbolgia, who also appears in the movie and the animated show because I'm sure some of these characters you've seen if you've not read the comic books. And Spawn decides, you know, or Al rather, that he wants to fight against the forces of hell and heaven. He doesn't. He wants to help humanity. He wants to protect humanity because there's this huge war between heaven and hell. And he does that by taking on street gangs at first, and then eventually he takes on bigger enemies like Overkill, Psyg, what was his name, the Gorilla Guys, uh, the Freak. There are angels in here like Angela. And, oh, the guy that's overseeing him, like, kind of like his tutor a little bit like stick to daredevil is the violator here 
who goes by the clown and then turns into the violator. And this particular compendium collects the first 50 issues of this series. But that's pretty much it. Billy Kincaid. But that's pretty much it. That's that's basically Spawn, a guy that decides to go up against the forces of hell and heaven to protect humanity. Now since he wiped away uh, his memories, he doesn't remember everything at first, he comes to Earth, uh, slowly but surely he starts to remember his wife Wanda. So there's one, of course you have to have soap opera in here, there's uh, one big soap opera thing in here now, and that is the fact that he comes five years later to Earth after dying, and Wanda is now married to his best friend while he was still in the land of the living, and that is Terry. Terry Fitzgerald, who's actually based on a Tom McFarlane's friend. But anyway, that's a whole nother thing. So they are now married, and they have something that Al could not give her, and that is a child, Cyan. But that's, there's Overkill. That's basically the premise of Spawn. Now, for those people wondering, the big question is issue number nine collected in here. Here's the ending of issue number eight, and here we have the Neil Gaiman introduction to Medieval Spawn, Angela, and there's another character in here that Neil Gaiman fought for the rights for, uh, but it is collected in here. Now the scan of this, it may look a little bit blurry to you, and I'm assuming that's because of the masters. The original masters of the scans here were just not scanned well. Now that's also the way that it's collected in the hardcover. So here we have the hardcover and you can tell the scans, even though they're a little bit bigger than, here let me find the page that I'm on. Even though the pictures are a little bit bigger, it's still a little bit blurry to see. And it's only in this issue, the other scans are clean. Now the other thing I'm sure you've noticed as I'm flipping through here, this is the deluxe edition again that I have, is that this compendium does not collect any of the covers. We literally, let's go back to the beginning, we have the credits here, and we jump to issue one, and that's how they tell you what issue you're on. There's no table of contents, and no page numbers, and no covers. So I'll be honest, this is just me thinking out loud, like, I, that's, that's kind of disappointing. Because to me, the biggest draw of Spawn is the artwork. And I realize I'm a completist and not everybody thinks like me, but if someone like me, the biggest draw to your book and stories is the actual artwork, you know, you don't just, like, I, I say the same thing about why I own Absolute Wildcats. I really don't have any emotional ties to the characters or the story, but I love artwork and oversized artwork. And if some of the artwork, including your covers, are missing from the collection, then that's going to make me second guess myself about purchasing something like this. Now, if I love the story, don't care about covers, and I want it all complete, then this is the way to go because it's in here. For the first time in years, after the huge lawsuit uh, between Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane, this issue number 9 and issue number 10 and, and, and sometimes issue number 8 depending on the collection, you know, these were left out of some collections and now they're all in here. Now the things that are missing are of course, uh, besides the covers, the, the miniseries like the Violator miniseries, uh, Sam and Twitch uh, series, which, you know, that wasn't really a miniseries. Um, but I did want to point out the fact that the, the covers are missing. Now, you're probably asking, oh, dude, Omar, they're probably in the back as extras. That's what they do with collections like this. Hey, Bad Rock. Yeah, um, man, I got some bad news. There are no extras. There's literally just the cover without the logo or any of the font, and that's it. It literally ends on issue number 50. No extras. Um, let's, let's go back here and talk about, oh, I forgot about the time. He was given it limited time. Boy, that, that went away soon. Um, but to me, yes, the biggest draw of Spawn was always the artwork. I love Todd McFarlane and he knew the talent to pull. I mean, much like DC and Marvel pulled from the 2000 AD talent pool, Image was pulling from the Marvel talent pool. All the young guns that were drawn at, at Marvel. Greg Capullo uh, drew Quasar. There's the Redeemer. The anti-spawn at first. That's when Greg Capullo... Actually, he did two villain issues. Uh, he was drawing Quasar. He went on to do X-Force. And Todd McFarlane was like, Hey, this guy has a similar style to mine. Let's get him some money and let him come over here to Image Comics. Same thing happened to Antonio S. Daniel. 
he was drawing X-Force, and then Todd McFarlane pulled him over to draw Spawn, eventually he got his own series, Angel Medina, but that's not until later. But the biggest artists here are, of course, Todd McFarlane, who eventually leaves the book and lets Greg Capullo take over, uh, Tony S. Daniel, like I mentioned, and then Mark Silvestri, let's see if we can find his issue, it's issue 25, I think, if I still remember, yeah, here we go, back here. So Image had this month where the creators swapped the books they were working on, you had Todd McFarlane go over to Cyberforce, Mark Silvestri come over here uh, to Spawn, and this is what the artwork looks like. Oh, yeah, this guy right here. Yeah, but anyway, this is what Mark Silvestri's one issue looks like here. Now, we've talked about the art, uh, we've talked about the story, here's Tony S. Daniel. He was still kind of new to comics back then, too. Now, his art developed into something completely different, but... This is what some of the artwork looked like uh, when inked by McFarlane. So we've talked about that, and we talked about the missing ish, uh, the missing covers. But what about the book itself? I mean, we're looking at a book, a, a soft cover that's over 1,100 pages. How is this holding up? Well, as you can see, it's laying flat. I mean, we're looking, yeah, we're looking at issue number 15. Let's go back. Of course, it's not. It's going to want to close up the earlier we look. But I mean, we've had card covers do that, right? And the other important thing is, how's that spine going to hold up after many reads? Is it going to crease like those old uh, compendiums of Witchblade and Darkness? Probably. Hey, there's Sam and Twitch. So, I mean, it's starting to close a little bit. That's, I mean, that's not really unusual. Like I said, there's Tiffany. Uh, we've had hardcovers that do this, that want to close up on you. But my main concern when it comes to books like this with that many issues is the spine spine will eventually start to crease over some time i would imagine i don't know um uh, my my old school compendiums kind of fell apart on me i still have them um uh, the witchblade and um darkness but this uh this is supposed to be the new kind of compendium that holds up better so we'll see over some time i, I guess i could do some experiments like crack this open many times but that would take a long time to do on a video I, to me, I think when you're going to spend that much money, like $60, and this is just my way of thinking, not everybody can afford hardcovers. I completely understand that because hardcovers get expensive. And if it's Spawn and it's your favorite series, then, and you finally have a way to collect issue number nine, then yes, this is for you. For me, I think I've gotten to the mentality of like, well, you know, I'm, uh, we're, I'm older now and I want to relive these stories the best possible way that I can. And that's owning the hardcover formats, oversized hardcover formats. Um, now, I didn't go crazy when the Origins collections were coming out. I just stuck to the deluxe editions because we did have, like I mentioned, the big oversized library editions that went for a lot more money. I wanted to show some splash pages, though. So here's what the splash pages look like, because when we're looking at the binding of the book, it is glued binding. So you are going to get some gutter loss, of course, and that, that's, that's just common sense. So, there is art that's going to be missing. Not, it's not terrible. Like I said, I've seen hardcovers that actually have more gutter loss than this does. We'll look at a couple more splash pages. But my mentality is thinking, yeah, maybe, you know, if we can't reprint the original collection um, Origins hardcovers, well, how about a book like this with all the covers and about 50 pages of extra, and, you know, make it $125 in oversized omnibus format. That's And release this, too, for the people that don't collect hardcover formats or for people that can't afford that. That's It feels like when, after interviewing Eric Larson, like, these old creators, and I say old, they're not, they're still young, but, like, Todd McFarlane is afraid to take a chance with some of the characters. Like, and so is Eric Larson. Whenever I asked him about hardcover collections, it's like they're almost don't want to gamble and taking a chance or don't want to get their feelings hurt if the books don't sell. I guarantee this book is going to sell, with or without this review. Even if people are upset that there are no covers, that we go straight into the issue, people are going to still buy this. This is Spawn. And we're going to go buy this with the mentality of like, hey, maybe if I buy this, Image will see the interest in this and release a hardcover. And then I'll have all my covers and the extras in the back. But until then... I cannot find any spreads. Hold on. Uh, until then, this is as good as it gets for collections that are still in print and completely covering everything from issue 1 through 50. Here's some spread pages from issue number 16. 
Wizard of Violator Brothers, I cannot remember their name, Vindicator, Vivicator, um, yes, definitely some gutter loss right there, of course, guess glued binding, and, I mean, I don't think anybody in their right mind is gonna break their book to see the both eyes, I'm trying to get all the art as possible, sometimes, you know, we let our imagination fill in the blanks, if you will. But I think I've talked about this enough. I've talked about the plot, the art, the build of the book. Again, glued binding, soft cover. Um, yeah. If you have any more questions, please leave them below in the comments section. Love to answer them. Oh, um, I guess let's talk about the paper quality. Now, keep in mind, of course, these came out about a decade ago. But the paper quality on these are nice, thick, glossy paper. This is thinner. Um, not as thin as Infinity, the hardcover, for all those that remember. But it's, it's, it's thinner. And it has to be, I mean, to keep costs down, uh, to keep the book from just being too thick. Thicker than a stack of divorce papers. But anyway, that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this compendium. Let me know in the comments down below if this is the way you're going to be collecting Spawn. If you're a huge fan of Spawn and you've been waiting for a huge collection like this. If you're hoping and still holding on to the possibility of an oversized hardcover collection. Very much collecting these issues, but with the covers and extras in the back and sketches like that. I would love to know all those comments down below. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. More importantly, all of you, stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love.